So as of now, 2,000 Everglades deer have just two days to live, but that could change. On Thursday, a Florida appeals court will hear the case. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Osgood. Recognize that fellow? He's a young TV reporter named Bill O'Reilly. Yes, really. Today, his show, The O'Reilly Factor, is a very big factor in the world of cable TV. Harry Smith of The Early Show has prepared this Sunday profile. People lost no, millions of dollars. Fault. It wasn't your fault. Come on, you coward. Say the what truth. You coward. Bloviation? O'Reilly, be thy name. He should have been deported, and this mayor and the police chief didn't deport him. Bill O'Reilly is judge, jury, and executioner on his Fox cable show. Number one, you hate your country, and number two, you're a loon. Where when reason fails, rage wins. Here's the problem with going on your show. You start ranting, and the only way to respond is almost to look as boorish as you. O'Reilly is right about everything. Just ask him. The point I always try to make to people is the people who hate me the most are the people who never watch my show. They read the press, they listen to the far-left kooks, or the far-right kooks, because the far-right hates me. Um, but they never sample. And once they do sample, they go, no, no, this guy's no ideologue. He's pulled them all accountable. Mm -hmm. Caution. You are about to enter the no-spin zone. The factor begins. The O'Reilly factor has been at the top of the primetime cable news heap for the past eight years, with around four million loyal viewers every night. The deck is stacked <clears throat> against Governor Palin, particularly with the media. I think the loyal because he says he's like them a kid who was lucky to be born in America, a notion he explores in his latest book, A Bold, Fresh Piece of Humanity. It's not particularly dramatic. No, no, it isn't. It's right. basically an American story. But n nowhere else on this planet could a wise guy from Levittown with right. no uncle in the business, no social skills at all, I'm sure you'd agree, kiss nobody's butt ever, right. rise up, and command the position that I command. That couldn't happen in Switzerland. It couldn't happen in Japan. <laughs> it happens in America. And, and I'll tell you how. Right. Born in 1949, William James O'Reilly Jr. grew up in the New York City bedroom community of Levittown, an experience he says made him what he is today. After World War II, the people in Brooklyn and the Bronx and some of the other boroughs moved en masse to Long Island because they built all these little houses for the GIs. And that my father was in that crew. As I read through this, you had a pretty comfortable life in Levittown. Dad had a job. Mm. I, I don't know my life in Levittown. Now it is. Right. Well, we lived in a little box house right. with no air conditioning. I show you. We all did. That's okay, exactly but, how we all did. I mean, it wasn't real comfortable in the middle of August no. when it was 112. So I, I'm not, you know, the I can't feel sorry for you. The com I don't ask you to. I'm not asking you. Right. But you got to put it in perspective. Comfort really was like 16th on the uh, priority list right. at the O'Reilly House. Sure. It was, you Food know. Food on the table was number one. Yeah. It, comfort. Right. You know, my father was like, you know, if it's hot, go outside. <laughs> it was a tough neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk out, you had a fight. Right. There were no play dates. <laughs> I wasn't wearing a little helmet on the bike. All right, there wasn't any mom, mom, it wasn't beaver cleaver. Right. It was like, you know, you'd hold your own. He survived, and after a brief career as a high school teacher, young Bill O'Reilly began a series of TV reporting jobs, including a stint at this network. Is a question Congress will have to consider. Bill O'Reilly, CBS News, Miami. In 1996, O'Reilly settled at the newly created Fox News, where he remains Commentator in chief. All right, what do you got? Every week, O'Reilly Factor staffers pitch segment ideas for his approval. Um, a library board in Helena, Montana, voted unanimously to keep the book *The Joy of Gay Sex* on the library shelves. It's not in the kids section or anything, right? And Thomas Riccio is suing Dr. Phil's talk show, alleging the interview that he did was unfairly edited. Not gonna do it. If you can get him, and then somebody for Obama, some famous person then I could probably do it. And then the woman at the center of the Duke lacrosse scandal wrote a book that was released today saying that she's not yeah, lying. Yeah, we're doing that tonight. I want to do the Palin uh, McCain thing, the double interview that he did with NBC. What do you think happens if McCain gets elected president? Not much. I think McCain is a traditional politician. I think that he will keep the economy 
in a low tax grade. He'll be friendly to business because he wants business to expand, to employ more people. I think he'll be a tough guy overseas. Uh, not a crazy guy, but a tough guy. Um, and I think he'll govern in a traditional manner. I, I, I go to the bank on that. If Obama is elected, I don't know what's going to happen. His whole career has been left wing. Is he an ideologue? Is he going to bring a far left sensibility into the White House? My instinct says no, because he's cautious. When I interviewed him, I saw a very cautious guy. I didn't see some crazy bomb thrower. I can read people pretty well. Um, so I think he, he took the avenue to power that he had to take. I think he'll govern to the center like Clinton did. I think Clinton is his role model for governance. I think JFK is his role model for the campaign. And Obama has waged a brilliant campaign. That's next. The first time for Countdown's number two story tonight's worst persons in the world. The most popular cable news host in the country has some very public enemies. The Fox News host presents himself as an independent. Well, you know, they could have also gone with official loofah inspector, or he's a Nielsen ratings conspiracy theorist, or a bold, fresh piece of expletive. What do you think of Keith Olbermann? You know, I, I ignore all of those gutter snipes because they're just in it to hurt people. <clears throat> Whether it's some guy on MSNBC or talk radio or wherever, why would I engage that? You know, they, they don't do anybody any good, and that's it. I think it bugs you a little bit. Nah, the, what, the meanness of the discourse in general bothers me. Okay? Now, some people say, well, you were mean to Barty Frank, and you were mean to this one or that one. Sometimes I go overboard, okay? But that's not my theme. Now, I joke sometimes about when I'm out walking around, uh, people see me and they say, there he is, get him. But in your case, it's true, isn't it? Letterman may have been only half joking. O'Reilly says his views have made him a target. My life is dangerous now, you know? Uh, I have bodyguards and security. I can't go many places. Uh, I can't be in certain crowd situations. When I do a book signing, I gotta have a phalanx of state troopers there because there are crazy people. And that they're the websites and all of that, which are just totally out of control, um, they encourage these nuts. You know, I always think about John Lennon. You know, John Lennon's trying to be a nice guy, signing a guy's hand, and pops him. Mm -hmm. So. That is the worst part of the whole factor experience. The best part is I get to look out for the folks, and the folks know it. They know it. Yeah. I've been doing this for more than 12 years. If you're a phony, they know. Both parties are at fault, as I stated, but one guy, Cox, says, yeah, I screwed up, and it one guy, totally Frank, says it's issue. everybody else's fault. In O'Reilly's case, you could take the boy out of Levittown, but you'd better not no, you dare not even try to take the Levittown out of the boy. Do you know why you're so successful? <clears throat> yeah, I know. Because I'm one of the folks. That's why. And because I look out for them, and they know that. And um, we had six million people watch us last night. And they know that now in the media there's somebody on their side. Mm -hmm. Sincerely on their side, not some phony. So why wouldn't you watch the guy like that? 